Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, giving all praises to our Father in Heaven. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Word and how consistent it is. In other words, we're going to look at several documents, uh, particularly the Third Testament of the Bible, as well as the Keys of Enoch and the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon, which were all inspired here in the end times. And we're going to look at how consistent they are as they talk about the reality that we live amongst other worlds or even other universes. Now, the first book that I want to bring you to is the sealed portion. You guys have been telling me about this book for a long time, but it was only after recently listening to the book of Nephi, I believe it is, from the Book of Mormon that I was inspired to actually look and see what was in this book. And I've made it about 20 chapters in listening to it. And I must say that I'm quite impressed. But anyway, we were just doing a search for the word worlds and thought we'd share a couple of verses out of here, a couple of verses out of the Keys of Enoch, and then we'll finish up with the Third Testament of the Bible. All right, so let's get started. We're over here in chapter 20 of the sealed portion. Verse 53 says, And they have been with us here upon this earth in the realm of the spirit since the beginning. This is talking about the children of the darkness and or those who violated the laws. But anyway, it says, And Lucifer has also been here amongst us which we know he was there in the Garden of Eden, like it says, and he tempted Eve and she gave in to his enticements and disobeyed the commandments of God. Now, one thing about this sealed portion, it goes into details about this interaction between Satan and Eve that you might find quite interesting. But anyway, it says, but Satan... As he is known amongst us in mortality, justified that which he had done unto Eve, claiming that it was necessary in order to bring about the mortality of the children of God, as it had been done in other worlds. So what this is saying is Satan used the fact that we live in or amongst these other worlds or these other dimensions so, in other words, the truths that Satan was using to trick Eve was that uh, procreation is necessary to bring spirits from the other dimensions into this reality, into our dimension. And he's explaining to her that this is how it works throughout the universes and all of the worlds, at least the ones in which the keys of Enoch refers to as the dust worlds or the material worlds. Matter of fact, let's go over there to the keys of Enoch, also looking for the word worlds. And this is not an exhaustive search by any means. These are just the first verses that inspired me to do this video in the first place. Like for instance, down here in key number 117, verse two says, Yet even when man ascends to the higher orders of creation, the scriptures of light given in grand keys and revealed by the paradise sons will not be placed asunder. This is saying that even though these spirits may elevate, certain people may rise to a higher level of awareness or a higher consciousness, the scriptures will still yet be necessary. They're not going away. Like the Messiah said, heaven and earth will pass away before the laws will pass away. But anyway, it says the Redeemer can only live in those who partake of the ongoing witness of the throne, which precedes every new emanation of divine scripture. Talking about our spiritual evolution and how his living waters will continue to flow. See, some people want to act like we have all of the scriptures that were ever created with the Bible or something like that. Not understanding that our father still speaks to us 
today. And if somebody chooses to write down what he says, then that's actually an inspired writing, whether it is publicized or not. It says, thus, the keys of the scriptures of light will continue and be placed within the scriptures of the new age, for they will be used in other worlds to train new realms of physical intelligence. This kind of reminds us of John chapter one, verse one, where it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. These scriptures of light are carried throughout all realms of physical intelligence in other dimensions, other worlds, everywhere. But now coming back to the sealed portion, still in chapter 20, we're going to jump down to verse 73, which like I said, this is not an exhaustive search. It's just the next time we see the word worlds mentioned, it says, and after we are dead, we shall be judged according to the works that we have done, even according to our obedience and conformity to the laws of heaven. Now, like we said, we want to do this class to show the consistency of these scriptures here. Notice how both these scriptures, the seal portion and the keys of Enoch are talking about the worlds. And they're also talking about this necessity to obey the law. This is, is important. You know, when people debate the idea of whether certain scriptures are inspired or not, I believe the number one thing you can look to see if an, a scripture is inspired, other than it tells the future, is the consistency with all the other scriptures that we've ever read. But anyway, verse 73 says, And these same laws exist forever in the eternal worlds that have existed long before the mortal state in which we find ourselves. So see how that was what the keys of Enoch was saying? Um, it's basically saying the exact same thing. And it's also interesting to look at the dates in which these two books were written, even though, you know, they were written in different places. And we're going to see that the Third Testament come into play here in a second. But let's look right here where it says, and these same laws exist forever in the eternal worlds that have existed long before this mortal state in which we find ourselves. Again, like John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word we recognize as these laws. It says, and these same laws shall exist in the eternal worlds after this mortal state, even forever. Again, like the Messiah says, even after this planet is burnt up, will the laws still be in existence? Will they still be important? Now, let's go back and look at another verse from the Keys of Enoch. This would be the 99th time we see the word worlds mentioned. In verse 24, it says, We have to understand how the vibrations of our consciousness time zone connect with all those worlds previous and parallel to our own and all worlds that will come after. So this is some deep stuff here talking about how these worlds work and we're going to see how it explained in more detail over in the third testament but notice here first of all it's talking about these vibrations and you hear people mention how we should operate in higher vibrations and avoid low vibrations you can hear the origin of these lower vibrations and even the higher vibrations in the book called the shepherd of Hermes as it talks about the powers and the virtues that control man. But here what he's saying is that these vibrations of our consciousness time zone connect with these other worlds. And let's remember that part when he's talking about connection with these other worlds. We'll see that again in the third testament. But let's finish up here. It says only then can we as transformed creation truly redeem our race to become one with the Christ race so as to participate in the many realms of experience. Talking about the higher mansions here. And we understand that these worlds are mansions. This, what we refer to as the earth, is actually one mansion. And when we leave here, we'll go on to these higher mansions or these other worlds that are mentioned here in the Keys of Enoch. And like I said, these are just random searches here for the word. Um, didn't prioritize these verses 
uh, myself at all. But let's come back over here to the third testament of the Bible, because it has a whole section called other worlds in chapter 26, a whole chapter devoted to other worlds. And we want to look particularly close at one section here, um, the spiritual link between the worlds. Let's just read verse 10 says, my divine light shines throughout the universe. You will find my presence wherever you seek me. Referring to these other worlds, um, refer to them as, as planets. All it, it, We learn in this book that each of these planets or these other worlds have spirit beings dwelling on them, whether they have flesh to go with those spirits or not. But the point he's making here is that his spirit is there already. Verse 11 says, I am the divine father who works to bring harmony to all his children on earth and those who dwell in other worlds. So now he's speaking of harmony and he's going to talk about how it's important for us to get along, even though we live in other worlds. Um, and he's going to tell us how to do it, too. Verse 12 says the spiritual harmony among all beings will reveal great knowledge. It will provide you with spirit to spirit communication that will cut distances bring the absent close and erase borders and boundaries. And like I said, he's, he's going to get into details on how that all works. Let's look at verse 13. It says this harmony will make great strides towards spiritualism. Its spirits can go far beyond human limits and come to the higher dwellings to communicate with their brothers and receive the light that they have to offer. So it's referring to our brothers on other worlds and how we can um, communicate with them, even travel there to meet with them, gaining light that we can bring back to this world and share with our brothers here. Um, I'm not sure if it's this section that talks about how this happens when we sleep, actually. Um, our spirits can detach from our bodies and travel to these other, other worlds. But anyway, verse 14 says, They may also descend to the plains where there dwell undeveloped beings of little elevation in order to help them overcome their poor condition and achieve a higher level. See, when we're told to communicate with the people on these other worlds and, and, and this, we learned this in the third Testament and that's important to, to know because the third Testament is the only one of these three scriptures that we talk about here in this video that claims to be Holy scripture. The other ones, you know, they, they, um, are, they claim to be inspired, but this one actually is the only one that claims to be, uh, the word of God itself or, you know, Holy scripture, the third Testament of the Bible but it tells us in this book to pray um, that these entities on these other worlds will come and help us in our condition and so what it's saying here is that when we are better off than some of these other worlds then when we go there we actually help them too so um, and he tells us to be appreciative um, both ways so because it counts towards our, our righteousness but anyway, verse 15 says the latter the spirit ascends to its perfection is very great and on it you will find beings of infinity of graduation and you will offer them that which you possess and they in turn will give you something of their spiritual riches. So we have to understand when he says that he is infinite and you know that we live for eternity he means that literally and so we go through a spiritual evolution so you can imagine there's some people ahead of us and some people that are behind us and so it's saying you know here how we actually um work together that we are of infinite graduation meaning you you have some at the very beginning and some who are close to the end and when we come in contact with each other we are to help each other along the way we both need each other no matter what position we are along this path Verse 16 says, then 
you will discover that this is not the only world that struggles for its improvement. So these dirt worlds especially are our training grounds. That's one of the first steps that we have to do in order to go to the higher mansions is learn how to live as humans. That's the, the basic. That's why this is the first reality that we are aware of. From now on, when we go to the higher mansions, we will not only be aware of this reality this where we lived here at earth and and how we lived here on earth but we'll also be aware of you know the future too and what our spirits will go through this being the first one the basic bottom line this is basic training so the first thing we have to do is learn to live as human beings and that's why we're given the laws by moses and the other uh covenant laws there like the one from Noah has to not eat in blood and the one from Abraham about being circumcised and all of those are basic human, human, human things to, to separate us from being animals. Um, what it says here struggles for improvement. But anyway, it says you will learn that on all the planets, the spirits evolve, that on all of them, it palpitates and grows, fulfilling its destiny. And I wish you to prepare to make alliance with all your brothers that you communicate with them with a holy yearning to recognize, love and help each other. So in other words, you know, we don't go there to harm them. We don't go there to enslave them or to gain something from them that we could come back to this planet and enslave our brothers with. We have to go there with a yearning to recognize, love and help each other. Talking about our spiritual brothers on other worlds. Verse 17 says, do this in my name through your thoughts and within the strictest obedience. And when you start this existence, you will begin to interpret their petitions and their teachings and benefits. So it's actually instructing us to try this, to actually try to communicate with these beings on other worlds, to actually talk to them spirit to spirit. Um, even when we are praying in the morning, we are, one of the things we're praying for is um, to to share our appreciation for what they're doing to help us. And we're asking for the uh, um, chance to go to other worlds ourselves and participate in, you know, some of, you know, the assistance that they need in, in the um, worlds of lower condition. But anyway, verse 18 says, I yearn for you that harmony exists with your brothers on and beyond this planet that is currently your home. Prefer ties of friendship. Ask for help when you need it. And help those who ask for from what you possess. So he, he's telling us to ask these beings on other worlds for help. Um, they apparently can't come here and assist us. And, you know, just like the angelic figures. And that's, you know, probably, you know, how we can understand these other beings from these other worlds is in angelic form and how they're able to travel at the speed of light from their planet to our planet for assistance but if you don't mind i want to drop all the way down here to verse 30 where it starts talking about the purpose of the stars let me read it it says in your father's house there are many dwellings which are the infinite steps of the ladder that leads to perfection from them the spiritual world descends to manifest itself among you so here is talking about the spiritual world um you hear i'm talking about um the chariots um of elijah uh those chariots of fire swinging low um some call it great awakening um um some refer to it as the rapture this big spiritual event that's supposed to take that's supposed to change the world change humanity that is change the world verse 31 says many times you have asked me spirit to spirit why there are so many stars and about the planets that shine over your world and you have asked master are those worlds empty so here and he's talking about humanity as a whole everybody you know asks these questions 32 says i tell you the time has not come for me to tell you outright when men have reached spirituality then great revelations will be given them and they will be able to communicate with those beings beloved by my divinity spirit to spirit and communication of thoughts between all the brothers 
will occur. And I believe that we are arriving at this point here. Now, this has always been true, at least up until the last few years or months. Um, I should say maybe January of 2022. Um, before then, this is what he's talking about, um, at least to me, was completely alien, pun intended. But since then, we're understanding that the first beings that we'll come in contact with will be the Ophanim. We learned that over in the Keys of Enoch. And But there are other um, entities. I want to say lower level entities because we're all brothers. But there are entities on these other worlds um, that we will come in contact with spirit to spirit. Um, and again, it's through communication of thoughts. That's where it's, it's, we have to get that part. Get that part understood is that you know this is not a physical thing you know nobody's about to fly off any anywhere 33 says still from today forth know this all of the worlds are inhabited by my creatures nothing is empty all are blessed gardens cared for by mary the divine tenderness so here it is saying that all of the world so even the world like saturn and you know we learned that there are beings who breathe other elements than oxygen they they breathe other gases like methane or something like that um, we learned that in the uh, keys of Enoch but what I believe the message that he's saying here if he doesn't say it directly um, is that these beings are spirit many of them are spirit there are another habit inhabitants there are other beings fleshly third dimensional beings out there but he's saying every world has something on it. And so many of these worlds which can't sustain life doesn't have any water on it. These beings will simply be spirit beings. But let's see what he says in 34. He says the Holy Spirit will return to speak through your mouths of more elevated lessons yet unknown to you and to humanity. Like I said, I believe we're here um, right now and we're getting this information through the text as well as the Ophanim directly like we spoke about earlier. Um, he's speaking to a lot of people all you have to do is learn how to activate the Elijah spirit and we've done videos covering that from the third testament is where we learn how to do that from the um, third testament of the bible but anyway it says when beloved people when will we start to understand these things I say January the uh, 13th 2022 but it says when there is spirituality in you and consecration in your mission okay and that right there, the mission we learn in the Third Testament that we get our mission only after we learn to live within the law. We have to learn to live within the law first, which are the covenants. You have to read the, the covenants. Um, those those are the laws, and that's what it means to learn to live to be humans. Um, is to live within those laws, those rules, those instructions. And once we do that, then we get our mission. And then what it's saying here is once we have the consecration and our mission along with spirituality, then we will be able to um, speak for the Holy Spirit. Like it says there, the Holy Spirit will return to speak through your mouth of more elevated lessons. So you will be able to uh, get to do these uh, more elevated lessons when we get to uh, these points here. But like we said, we cover those in other videos Um how to activate the Elijah spirit um, and, and those so we'll check those out but let's keep going let's look back over here at the sealed portion looks like chapter 24 verse 57 says for behold the laws of heaven cannot be altered for they are eternal which meaneth they cannot change yet they have always been the same and shall always be the same again talking about the consistency and that's what this video is all about is the consistency of the scriptures and how they talk about the laws and how the law are still pertinent today how they're still um absolutely necessary um if we want to be on the good side of anything anything any of this that's been talked about here like where it says, but it is the desire and work of the father 
that he prove all his words unto us so that when we receive our eternal bodies and are subjected forever to these eternal laws, that we might understand that they are righteous laws and that there is no other way except by these laws that we can receive eternal joy and reside in happiness in the eternal worlds that he has prepared for us. So, um, like I said, we have to learn how to live as humans. That's what that's what the laws given to Moses are all about. You know, don't steal, don't kill, don't commit adultery. Love our Father. Hallowed be His name above all other you know entities in 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 the universes. And you know, honoring the Sabbath day and all of those rules, and even the other covenants um, as well are necessary if we want to have this joy what he says reside in happiness in the eternal worlds that he has prepared for us we're kind of taking these at random so i guess the next one we want to come to is uh the third testament put in the word worlds now down here in chapter 27 um it's called the beyond we can see it's talking about the word worlds in verse 12, let me just read it. It says, In the hereafter, the spirit can also find worlds of darkness, of perversity, and hatred, and vengeance, according to the spirit's degree of confusion, low passions, and desires. So, this is referring to how we live here in this world before we go off to these other mansions. What kind of mansion can we expect to go to? Well, if we're living a life according to what we read here a life of darkness then we can expect the worlds that we would go on to to would be inhabited by darkness as well you know it's kind of the way it works we get the things that we desire in life and afterwards too so but it says but truly i say to you that the heaven as well as the hell which men visualize only through earthly figures and images are no more than different stages of the spirit's evolution. One stage is that of the highest level of perfection achieved by a spirit through its evolution and virtue, and the other is a stage where the spirit lives in an abyss of darkness, vices, and confusion. So it's important that we live right. You know, it's important that we fought and, and living right as a, we learn how to live right according to the law. That's what the law is and not a judgment call where we get to judge one another and say who's living right, who's not. It's basically based on the the laws. That's how we're that's how we are judged. That's how is our, what we are judged by is the laws. All right. So we're going to go ahead and close out there. If you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't. Go ahead and hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And may our Father in heaven, hallowed be his name, bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father in heaven lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.